In this introductory presentation, we will start where every introductory presentation should start, and that is, what is in it for us? Why would we want to learn accounting? What are the reasons for learning accounting? We are going to start off to answer that question and say, because it's... We will return to this after we see the objectives. The objectives being, we will be able to, at the end of this presentation, list and describe reasons for learning accounting, list and explain types of accounting, list and describe types of entities. Back to our question, why would we want to learn accounting? I'm going to say the first reason is because it's fun. This may not be the first thing that popped in your mind. This may not be the first reason you're actually here taking this course in accounting. But I want to start off with this premise for a few different reasons. One is that it can be fun. There are areas within accounting that can be enjoyable to do. And two, I want to focus in on those areas because that will make the process of learning accounting more enjoyable to do. So we will get into the more traditional reasons for learning accounting. What is in it for us? What can we get out of accounting? How will it help our lives? But first, let's take a look at this fun factor. Accounting can be compared to accounting to putting together a puzzle. A puzzle can be an enjoyable task, although at first glance, it would look like a rather tedious task to put a bunch of puzzle pieces on a table and actually put them together. But the process of putting them together is an enjoyable task and many aspects of accounting will be much the same in that we will have different components we'll have to put those components together in certain ways in accordance with a set of rules and we may have to reorganize those components knowing that they will fit in a different format just as we know the puzzle pieces will fit together in order to match the image on the box we can also compare the accounting to learning something like music Music has a lot of patterns to it. We have to learn the patterns. Whether we learn those patterns in terms of an actual song pattern or the progressions in terms of chords or the progressions in terms of notes that we need to learn, we have to learn something before we get to the enjoyment of actually playing something. That's usually the difficult part, that learning part, that memorization part, before we get to the actual task of playing something. And the same thing is true with accounting. We're going to have to learn some memorization how to set things up before we can use that to get enjoyment out of the process and in order to apply it for practical purposes. We can also compare accounting to something like a game of checkers and notice that a game of checkers is played on a spreadsheet something that accountants will appreciate there. We're going to play the game of checkers on a spreadsheet. We're going to move these pieces in accordance to a set of rules. First thing we need to know in order to play the game of checkers is to learn those rules. First rules, how do you set up the board? Where do you put the pieces? Then how do you move those pieces? That will be much the same in accounting. We're gonna have to learn the rules of setting up the board. Where do we put the pieces? Then to learn the rules for moving the pieces. If you've ever taught someone a game of checkers or if you remember learning a game of checkers, that first process, learning how to put the pieces together and where to move them, is the difficult part. After we know that, it becomes much more enjoyable to play the game. The same is true with accounting. Also note that if we were to play a game like chess, it would be much more complicated to learn those rules to first set up the board. But it's a lot more difficult to master chess, and therefore we actually get more long-term enjoyment from a game as chess because of the complication that is there after we learn those rules. The same is true for accounting. There's a, there's we're never going to master the game, but we need to know the ground rules before we can play the game and then continually continue to improve within it. Other reasons for learn accounting, if you're a student, then this course is going to be the basics. So if you're going into the first accounting course, you probably want to take this and you can learn the accounting concepts before you go into the course. Accounting will be something that will accumulate upwards. Therefore, the fundamentals I compared to something like a sports, if you're playing baseball, just playing catch, you're going to play catch every game, whether you're first practice, second practice, or if you've been playing for 10 years, you're still going to be playing catch, you're still going to be digging out ground balls, you're still going to be doing batting practice. Those are the fundamentals, and whether you're a first year student or you're working in the accounting department, it's always good to go back to the fundamentals, even reviewing the fundamentals myself. Uh, I learn new things just doing that all the time. It's a good refresher to have. So if you're going into the course, you really want to pick those up because you can't move forward until you learn these concepts. These are concepts that will be needed throughout the entire process of accounting. 
no matter where you go within account, it's just like playing catch, you're going to need to be going back to the fundamentals every time. If you have already in an accounting class or if you're in an advanced accounting class, it's always good to have a course that is ready and available to go back to in order to revisit those fundamentals, so those core concepts. We'll go through the accounting cycle here and uh, this is something that can provide that process and uh, that information. If you work within an accounting department, then it's often the case where an accounting department, especially for larger corporations, you, you may work in a specific area and use specific software and, and that's because of separation of duties and, and many times we don't really see the big picture and a course like this will go through the big picture meaning it'll go through the normal accounting cycle that all companies go through and therefore whatever department we are in we'll get a better idea of what the other departments are doing for example there's an accounts payable department accounts receivable payroll we might have different budgeting areas it really depends on the size of the company but whatever the, the amount of compartments we have within the accounting department, learning the overall cycle will help us relate to those different departments. It'll also help us understand what we are actually doing. Oftentimes, if, we're, if we have data entry, then we're entering data and we may not really know what the software is doing. Uh, this will give an idea of what the software is doing. The more understanding we have of what the software is doing, the more valuable we are in the accounting department because if there are problems, uh, we're not just entering data, we can actually go in and see what is happening and, and be a problem solver. And those are the more valuable skills. The core accounting skills are also helpful with personal finances. So the same idea in terms of accounting is applicable to personal finances as well as business finances. One of the first things we will do is separate the personal from the business. And we're going to focus in on the business accounting. But on the personal side, the same things can be applied. It's just that we have a different objective and therefore the same principles can be applied to personal finances as well, which is an area that everybody needs some understanding of accounting in. Other reasons for learning accounting, if you're a student or if you're thinking about continuing uh, your career somewhere within accounting, accounting has a lot of different areas in it. So it might be thought that uh, if you work in the accounting, you go work in accounting department and that's all you can do with it. But Really, the accounting department and the accounting field has grown a lot. So there's a lot of different areas you can go within the accounting field. For example, uh, if you graduate in accounting, the most traditional path might be the CPA license. You can get certified as a, C as a CPA. You could continue to the MBA. These are kind of the typical uh, paths for students to take. Once they graduate uh, in an accounting major, they may either go for a CPA license and or uh, an MBA license. The CPA license is really a nice option to have because oftentimes it's not as costly as an MBA license and can provide a lot of value in terms of job seeking skills. So you have that available, whereas some other professions may not have that uh, type of certification option available, which can be very marketable. There's also a charter global management accountant and a certified management accountant. These are geared towards managerial accounting. So we can focus our career more towards managerial accounting and again, look for these certificates, which can be very valuable in terms for job placement to show employers that we have the skills needed. And they're oftentimes uh, take less time and money than, than a traditional MBA. Uh, we also have bookkeeping. We can go into bookkeeping. We can go into different departments like accounts receivable, accounts payable, payroll. These are all specialties that we can do. If we, if we do bookkeeping, we're probably thinking we're, we're working with smaller companies and we're doing more of the bookkeeping that's kind of a specialty we might be an entrepreneur if we work in a larger company we could specialize in accounts receivable accounts payable uh, payroll is becoming a bigger and bigger topic all the time as new laws are being put on the books payroll has become a specialty in and of itself uh, we can also have public accounting so that's audits and taxation area that we can work in and uh, entrepreneur we can be working for ourselves and, we, and apply these accounting skills to our personal business so the, the accounting skills are really applicable and there's a lot of different areas we can go within accounting. If you're taking this course and you're already in one of these areas or focused in one of these areas, these are going to be the core fundamentals you'll need in order to expand to any uh, of these types of areas. If you're a student and you're just starting in accounting, then uh, and you're thinking about going and continuing with accounting, at some point in time you're going to have to specialize and these are the types of things you're going to want to think about. Accounting is still a very broad major. 
and you're going to want to narrow that broad nature down to something either related to one of these also by industry you might want to work in construction versus merchandising industry you might want to break it down by uh, whether the company has inventory or not but there's a, there's a lot of options within the field of accounting also accounting is just good in terms of mental capacity so things like math skills and thinking about puzzles oftentimes people actually enjoy doing those and it's also good for your brain just to work through puzzles and work through problems work through math problems accounting isn't so much of a math problem it is more related to um, a puzzle like this putting pieces together moving different pieces around once you learn how to use software like excel then it becomes a lot more like a puzzle we're just basically kind of moving the pieces around in many areas of accounting and that's really good just mentally it's just really good practice to to do those types of of activities what is accounting accounting is going to be the compilation of information that is going to be financial transaction related for example we may have invoices or bills we're going to compile those financial transactions in something such as uh, using debits and credits this is a trial balance so all of our financial transactions we need to compile that information in some way that is useful we can imagine all the transactions we have all the all the transactions we make in terms of cash transactions every day uh, that we're going to have to compile that data we need a way to put that data in a format that we can then use it in order to make decisions so the end product generally will be financial statements financial statements including the balance sheet the income statement the statement of equity the statement of cash flows these are typically the end product for financial accounting and the goal of this end product is that it's in a format it's taken this financial data that we have been putting together that we needed to do throughout a certain time period a month or a year and it's putting that information into a relevant form for us to make decisions and for other users to make decisions external users such as creditors such as vendors such as banks there's going to be two broad categories of accounting we want to think about when considering accounting we can break these categories up into many different subcategories but these are the two very broad categories you want to have in mind when considering accounting that will be financial accounting what we will be focusing on in on here and managerial accounting Financial accounting is going to deal with external users, whereas managerial accounting is going to deal with internal users. This can be confusing because it is the case that managerial accounting is going to use much the same data that we will be using in financial accounting in order to make those managerial decisions. However, the financial accounting is geared towards the external users, those being creditors, so if we want to get a loan, the government in the form of taxes is one way the government would need the data possibly customers and investors especially if we're publicly traded we're going to need to provide this information to investors because these individuals are outside of the company they don't have intimate knowledge of the company and they may not have the same kind of level of trust within the, the numbers that are within the company therefore they have they have different needs in that they need some more standardization of the numbers and they need more regulation of the numbers so although the numbers are going to be um, the same basis on which those financial transactions being the basis on which the managerial data will be set the financial accounting data will have much more regulations it'll be much more strict in terms of how exactly are we going to put these financial statements together what exactly does a balance sheet look like how is it put together what does an income statement look like how is it put together we need to have very strict rules so that uh, these external users can have a good idea of what it is they are looking at in terms of managerial accounting we're geared towards management the internal users management is still very concerned with those same financial transactions so we're going to use those same financial transactions however we're not tied down to having to make the financial information exactly the same as the financial statements we may start there that's going to be usually the bigger base the broader base the big picture but we may want to compile that data in different types of ways using different types of reports often narrowing down in different areas so we can make decisions in terms of how different departments are doing in comparison to the business as a whole for, for the reason that the managerial accounting is internal 
and they have intimate knowledge of the of the industry there's not as much regulation within managerial accounting managerial accounting is regulated by best practices we're going to do what we think is best we're going to follow those best practices in order to make the best decisions business entities types of business entities will include the sole proprietor that's where we're really going to focus on here is the sole proprietor note that the principles of the transactions will be the same for our other type of entities but the sole proprietor is a good place to start because it will focus in on the equity section of one individual for the entire equity section which will simplify the process a bit the downside of a sole proprietor is that uh, there's generally liability problems in terms of there's less liability protection than say a corporation the pluses to a sole proprietor are that they're very easy to form so the sole proprietor in terms of the total businesses in the u.s is by far the largest number of businesses in the format of the sole proprietor however the revenue if we broke out the revenue the corporation would be the greatest revenue generator so the corporation generates the most revenue in terms of total dollars for the u.s economy but the sole proprietor in terms of number of businesses is by far the largest mainly due to the fact that there's ease in terms of being a sole proprietor meaning if we just start doing business in essence we are a sole proprietor and we have our certain responsibilities and one of those is to pay taxes on any revenue that uh, any net income that we're going to have basically any taxable income then we have a partnership also very easy to form it's similar to the sole proprietor we have the similar liability problems but now we have two people involved so uh, the same ideas that we will put together in terms of a sole proprietor will be applied to a partnership the major difference between a sole proprietor and a partnership will be the equity section so when you move from looking at transactions from a sole proprietor to a partnership we're usually not going to go back to the things that are the same meaning we don't need to go and re re revisit how to record the utility bill or how to record an invoice or how to record payroll those are the things that are going to be the same what we focus in on when we move from a sole proprietor to a partnership are the things that are different the equity section is different meaning the value of the company now has to be broken out between two or more individuals so a partnership could have two or more individuals and we want to make sure that we're, we're allocating the information to those two or more individuals that's going to be a very important uh, component of the partnership then we have the corporation the corporation is actually a separate legal entity so it's legally a separate entity from an accounting standpoint this isn't a whole lot different because from an accounting standpoint we actually treat all businesses as separate from the owner so when we work the books the business will be treated separate from the owner in terms of the sole proprietor and the partnership however the corporation from a liability perspective is also a separate entity which uh, mainly has the benefit one of the main benefits being that there's more liability protection within the corporation than either the sole proprietor or the partnership it's also often easier to generate capital within a corporation in terms of selling stocks for for an equity interest within uh, the corporation again when we move to the corporation all, there's, most of the transactions are going to be the same we're not going to redo how, how to record the utility bill again and the payroll bill all the normal transactions that we typically do will remain the same the dollar amounts may differ in terms of a large corporation will differ in terms of a large corporation and say a sole proprietor a small sole proprietor but the essence of the journal entries will remain much the same in terms of recording the payroll or recording the utility bill what will differ will be once again the equity section because who owns the corporation the shareholders own the corporation and therefore we're going to have to break out that equity section by the owners who in this case will be the shareholders we are now able to list and describe reasons for learning accounting list and explain types of accounting list and describe types of entities